All right, on today's episode of Python Poppy, we're back inside our TensorFlow course, and we're still doing our corrective measures module. Let's have a look at what we went over today. Now, yesterday, if you recall, we started the process of writing out our TensorFlow code to represent our models here. And today, we're just going to build on top of that. So this is how we would write our model. Let's move down so we can get today's information. First, we have dense, which represents our first dense layer. This dense layer has three outputs. Then we separate with the comma, and then we move on to the next. Next, we have our second dense layer and its outputs, which are four. Next, there's a third dense layer with two outputs. And lastly, we have the last dense layer, which is actually our output layer with one output. Note the outputs of our dense layers are the neurons. The dense layers get stacked together. This shows us how easy it is to carry out these operations with TensorFlow. Also note that it's very important to ensure that we have the last dense layer or the output layer so that we are matching up with our data. Let me move down just a little bit so you can see how we actually wrote it out. So this is how we get it written out in code. We have dense three, dense four, dense two, dense one. This is our dense layer one, dense layer two, dense layer three, and this is our output layer. Now remember these first three dense layers here make up our hidden layer. So with this, we have seen how we could do the real tensor flow. Now we have made our model more complicated. We've added more hidden layers so that we can learn more complex information stored in our data set. And there is one, hold on, get, and there's one point we need to mention, and that's the activation functions. Activation functions, simply put, are nonlinear functions, which add even more complexity to the model. If we added activation functions to our existing model, it will add more complexity for us and possibly give us access to more complex information in our data set. Now, these are the common activation functions. Now, these common activation functions are the sigmoid activation function, the tinch activation function, the ReLU activation function, and the leaky ReLU activation function. For now, we are going to use the ReLU activation function, and we will see subsequently that all these activation functions could be gotten from TensorFlow caress activations. And that's why I stopped, because I didn't want to move I didn't want to move too far ahead, too fast. I want to make sure I had a grasp on everything we learned so far before I move forward. And we'll pick everything back up tomorrow. But of course, I'll keep you guys posted every step of the way. It's the Python Poppy. You guys stay Gucci.